live. Well, hello, my dear creatives. Today, we have such a fantastic speaker with us today. It's my favorite and dear Liz Steele. Welcome, Liz. Liz, for those of you who, who don't know her, Liz is a fantastic urban sketcher. She describes herself in, uh, on her Instagram at least as non-stop sketcher or obsessive sketcher. So Liz is all about like inspiration, watercolor, sketching on location, urban sketching, like traveling around the globe. Yeah, like not now, obviously, but, uh, but like in general. And originally, Liz is from Australia, and I believe this wonderful opera sketch well indicates where she's from. She's from Sydney. So welcome, Liz. We're so happy to have you here today. And um, yes, my first question, even though I did like a quick introduction, I'm wondering, like, how would you describe who is Liz Steele? Like, what's the story behind you? Well, first of all, um, hi, hi, Olga. It's just lovely to catch up, catch up and to talk together. And um, it's been a long time. Um, yes. So I feel so honoured to um, have this chance to talk to you. Um, so first question, um, how do I describe Liz Steele? So a number of years ago, I um, found a description online of myself, um, which I thought was kind of funny, which is Liz Steele is an um, urban sketcher, she's an architect, when she's not traveling the world, she spends all her time in tea rooms. <laughs> and I went, oh, hold on a minute. There's more to my life than just traveling and, and tea. Um, but um, yeah, so, but I, 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 um, I'm an architect by training and uh, I uh, always did a lot of hand drawn drawings um, as part of architect, even if we, even though we live in a digital age. Uh -huh. And then um, I discovered watercolour. This is like before I went online and I thought this is what I've been looking for all my life and just started sketching my life. And then, of course, um, I discovered Flickr, Flickr, which is like before uh -huh. Facebook and Instagram uh -huh. and became very much involved in some early online groups, was there when Urban Sketches first started um, and became a correspondent very early on. And then in 2000 and 13, um, I, oh sorry, 2012, end of 2012, I actually left my architecture job to have a bit of a break and to do some teaching because a lot of the uh, urban sketches uh, encouraged me to actually start teaching. Uh -huh. And so, yeah, I left my architecture career and, um, and well, I didn't decide to do it permanently at the time, but it just happened. And now I, yeah, basically I see myself more as a teacher than an artist as such because I don't sell my work but my um, kind of commitment is to sketch my life um, yeah. and then share the adventure so I share the adventures um, I'm always trying to document um, everything I do I don't really care about creating masterpieces I'm more interested in capturing the moment recording what I see and creating a narrative of my life so it's really that story putting things in a sketchbook uh -huh. um, and having a lot of fun like I don't I don't take it too seriously like I have a long-term goal of um, excellence and wanting to always get better but here now in the moment I'm just about yeah. having fun learning from it um, so but yes obsessive sketcher people people you know that's the way I describe myself and people describe me um <laughs> even your uh, hashtag on Instagram is like a creator of sketching now courses I really love this now in in the description because for me at least it indicates um the presence like because at least for me when I do sketch on occasions I feel that I'm so present because uh, by nature, by personality, I tend to be a little bit anxious. And for me, sketching on location or like sketching for projects, it helps. It's kind of a meditation for me because it puts me in the moment. And uh, when even now, when I'm recalling um, 
like my travel to Paris or to Europe, to Russia, when I go through my sketchbooks, I can remember like every moment, like what I did. Probably this is one of the, 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 the best things that your students get from like your teaching and from your courses, right? This is so interesting. And it looks like it happens quite naturally, this transition. By the way, it's gonna be 10th anniversary. So if it started in 2012, next year, it's going to be 10 years that we have Liz Steele like <laughs> shining in the world in teaching <laughs> architectural <laughs> urban sketching. This is so wonderful. Yeah. And yeah, by the way, welcome back to teaching. I know that you're just back from your short vacation. Uh, you've been in Australian bush and sketching nature. Uh, yeah, I've seen this beautiful grayish green trees on your Instagram. And one thing I noticed is that you are talking about uh, two sketchbooks strategy. Could you please share like what's the secret, uh, the idea behind this interesting strategy? Because I've never seen that before. Uh, on, on Instagram, so it's really interesting. What's what's the secret behind it? Yeah. Okay, so um, oh, so much to catch up. But yes, what you're saying about sketching now and about being in present, I think, is one of the um, really important things. And and that idea of the experience of mm -hmm. the sketch uh, is is so important, rather than being stressed about the end result. And if you can kind of go right, I'm here in the moment. I'm enjoying the process then that's like a real secret to enjoying it. Um, and yes, I used to I, I used to travel the world and spend four months overseas in every, <laughs> like three to four months traveling a, a year. Um, and of course now um, we, we're kind of um, uh, unable, in, in Australia, we're unable to and in New Zealand travel. There's, as well, yeah. there's a ban, there's a ban on international travel. Um, and like earlier in the year, I had a wonderful six week road trip exploring my state, but here in Sydney at the moment, um, we're locked down. And so instead of having my state to explore, I don't even have all of my city. Uh -huh. I have just my local government area and a 5k radius where I can go out for exercise and outdoor recreation. So I recently had two weeks, um, holiday vacation, which I had planned to travel up the coast for. So I thought what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around my local area and strategize, go to different parts. I initially went to the northernmost part, the eastern, western, southernmost oh. part. And because like, you know, the like our restrictions, like there's like a certain degree of greyness, like what, like, what can I do? What can't I do? I decided that, um, well, first of all, I decided I wanted to use a different sketchbook to make it feel like a holiday. So I had uh -huh. this massive sketchbook. So this is actually- This is holiday a, sketchbook. <laughs> yeah, this is um, A4 long way. So it's like, it's like a short A3. So it's the huh. biggest sketchbook I've ever used. Uh -huh. And I thought, well, I can't technically just go and sit on the street and sketch at the moment because we're in lockdown. So I thought, well, what I might uh, do is have a strategy of having two sketchbooks. So having one smaller one that's, um, that I can use, I can just stand while I'm walking, pause quickly, do a, a couple of quick sketches, and then maybe translate that when I get home, sketch from photos using this as a reference. Or if I'm in the middle of the bush and there's no one around, then I use my big book. So yeah. that was the idea is basically born out of the restrictions that we currently oh, have. Oh. And this little book is, um, it's actually a, a Greenwood book. It's got a beautiful cover. It's an Australian company from Melbourne. And it's not really watercolour paper, but what I found was... Um, amazing so these are like what I did just quickly oh I'm hopeless this okay yes, quickly yes. standing up they're yeah. really really quick um sketches I don't care about whether they work or not and it's just that li liberation that freedom yeah. of um using using color pencil something different um I don't know what's going on just really really quick sketches oh, this looks fantastic even like this um like supermarket right so you you sketch and you record document like such a like routine uh, things that uh, like you can see from a different angle at this activity right so even going to grocery shopping becomes kind of adventure now these days yeah and so now I've actually got this I'm actually keeping it and so 
Like normally if I go for a walk, I don't want to bring all my gear with me. So now I go, right, okay, this is my walking book. So this is a separate book and it's just a collection of ideas. If I see a scene that I like, just really quickly, less than a minute maybe, quickly capture the, the essence, chuck a bit of pencil on and then go for it. And kind of separating the kind of capture of ideas with the production of art. So in a way it's going back to the architectural um, design sketching, which is the basis as opposed to, I mean, as opposed to what I was doing with the, oh, let's see if I can find something. Um, what, uh, I'm going to see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A, okay, so this then is, mm -hmm. this is okay. my typical. Oh. Yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, such a fine-tuned drawing. They complement each other so beautiful, beautifully, right? And uh, one thing I noticed on this uh, smaller one that you have kind of, is it like a branded list uh, still sketchbooks that uh, we can like order online or uh, because I've, I've noticed it's like an imp imprint or, or something. Yeah. On my name. Yes, I think they do that. You've um, asked me a question. I'm not. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think they offer that as a service. Um, so, um, yeah. So it's actually, it's been really liberating to, um, have this book that doesn't need to be pretty, that I don't need to share. Like, I love the bigger book. I love composing my pages and writing the narrative. And once I got over this mental barrier of having two books, so for yeah. me, normally, it's all about the story of my life. So I don't like have splitting my work over two books. Uh -huh. But now that I've accepted, ah, oh, this is just my walking book. Um, and if I want to go back and relive my trip, I'm going to be looking at two books at the one time. My yeah. trip. Do you like the way I think my trip? <laughs> I just stayed home. But I mean, that's how I thought in my mind. Um, and that, and that kind of that real. I think, I think for sketching, one of the biggest barriers is actually starting. Mm -hmm. And this, then, I've got a small bag. I've got a small book. When I'm walking, I've got lightweight. I, I just pull it out. I don't care. Do a sketch. Turn the page. Uh, it just, it, it's almost like a warm up. And then. Um, and then I'm like, what I'm doing with my walks is I'm parking my car in a different spot each day. So then I, once after I've done my walk, I come back to my car and then I do a proper sketch sitting yeah. in my car or nearby. So yeah, it's, it's, I think it's, I think sketching is all uh, like to have a really strong sketching practice is all about having strategies in place for doing it because it's just too easy for everything else in your life to take over. And yeah. unless you can work out a way that you can actually fit it into your daily routine it just won't happen <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of my so you know non-stop sketch up it's like yeah I don't I feel like I don't spend time on my art yeah I just fit it into my life yeah you just live your life yeah and creating at the same time I think this is such a like life hack for for lots of people who will be watching like this uh this video because very often people like I, I meet these questions like it, I, I have such a huge fear of like blank piece of paper staring at me from a schedule that I even can't start and like simple life hack like grab a small sketchbook or tiny sketchbook go on location like set a timer even for five minutes or ten minutes and feel free this this idea like goes from probably the book that almost uh, everybody read this uh, Julia Cameron the artist's way she talks exactly about that right how to begin without like ex expectations to create a masterpiece from scratch like nobody expects it it's all about expressing your creativity and I really love this uh, this process that you start with like a warm-up you see it is a warm-up and it reminds me of like a French impressionist they also used to go on location like create incredibly like sketchy drafty piece of art <laughs> and sometimes they do fine-tune it sometimes they send it straight through to the exhibition <laughs> on the impressionist and I really love this idea because you catch this life these moments uh, uh, at least like for those who have background in architecture because I also have like interior architecture background and we used to like spend so much time on these academic style drawings where you can like draw greek 
uh, heads of like heroes or Roman emperors for ages. Like you could, you could draw it like for hours straight. And then you find out like that it was so, so hard. And in this little thumbnail sketch, which took you like five minutes to create, you, you uh, could express so much more, so much more of your personality, of your ideas. I, I really love it. Yeah. And I, I know why these people were describing you as <laughs> like Lisa spending your, your life in cafes, local cafes with these teacups, because it looks like it's, it's your brand now. It's part of your <laughs> trademark teacup. <laughs> <laughs> yes well at, at the moment because of um lockdown one of my um one of my projects is to sketch a different teacup well sketch a teacup because I have like an extensive collection like I have over 50 fancy teacups uh -huh. so and that was one of the things it's just like I don't know what day we're on I've kind of lost count but like you're yeah, basically doing a teacup sketch for each day um was just a way of saying okay we're in this repetition of like every day being the same so let's have um, a fancy cup to make us like a celebration of each day being different but of course that's actually quite a lot of hard work because my teacups I've got to like you know go through find which one so um, <laughs> to, towards the end I like I, recently I've just been going oh, I don't care about changing it every day it's too much work I'm, I'm fine to have the same cup for a couple of days um, but uh, yeah that I, I think that idea of um, oh you said so many things there but um, the idea of that um, that the essence of the moment so like when I was working as an architect mm -hmm. um, often my um, my boss would get would get one of my scribbly sketches that I did while I was thinking on that was done on butter paper sitting on my desk he'd get it and he'd blow it up to like a one size uh -huh. and he'd use the earlier sketch even though I used to think oh it's so kind of wonky and it's not <laughs> perfect because it had so much more energy to it than the fit that like the one the kind of presentation one that I used to do um and so for me there is that there is that discovery like I, we were in this interesting space where the sketch had been elevated mm -hmm. to be an art form in itself and it, social media particularly Instagram kind of favors the beautiful you know the eye-catching thumbnail yeah. so it, it it becomes it's like that space of being able to do quick sketches being able to work in a small book um, they're, they're not the things that we see on our feed enough, I don't think anymore. I think in the earlier days we used to see more of it. Um, and also when you're sketching on a location, it's quite a shock to be around people. So if you actually oh, yeah. have a small mm -hmm. book and you actually feel comfortable to just sketch standing up is, is a really good way to get used to being around, mm -hmm. around people, being like get over that fear um, because yeah, the first couple of times your hand will be shaking. Yeah, so <laughs> oh, like, sorry, <laughs> but if somebody comes and asks a question, it's like I mean, the, the the funny thing is that what you're most scared of when you first start, which is someone talking to you, is actually the best part about it. Yeah. And if I was, I mean, obviously not now at the moment, but like you know, when things are open, um, and I go out sketching all day. If I don't have three beautiful conversations, random conversations to people, I think, what's wrong with me? What's, like, what, what's happening? <laughs> exactly. What's, it's wasn't a proper day if I don't get into, you know, some kind of nice, I mean, that is the, that's the best thing. And, and I think a lot of people are afraid, what if someone's criticized, I, like, what, what if someone's, you know, criticizes what's on the page? You just say, hey, I'm learning. Just say, <laughs> I'm learning. And then everyone will go, oh, that's so inspiring. And they always have, I know an aunt, I have an aunt that painted. It's always the aunt that paints. Um, <laughs> they start talking about, they don't really care so much, but just say, hey, I'm learning. If you're trying to draw people and it's like, doesn't, you're not happy with it, I'm learning. And then people wow. just like think that's fantastic. Um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this is also one of the like, most most common fears right like what if somebody will come and criticize my work like what if somebody will come and say like like I don't like it first of all it's it, like the person who says that is like a mean type of person who would come and say to creative things like that because like as creatives we used to be very fragile and quite sensitive to criticizing and it's really important 
for us to create this like thick skin to be like unstoppable and like whatever and I, I find that this answer is like a perfect answer like I'm learning and like not taking it to your heart like this is one of the opinions in the sea of opinions of other people like for you it's really important to to learn something here yeah and, the, and going back to this quick sketch I also found that very often, uh, like um, in architectural firms, they grab this uh, scratchy, quicky uh, sketch and they actually put it in the like big presentation for their like customers or investors. And the funniest thing is uh, uh, when they have feedback from investors, investors say like this quick sketch actually sold us the project because it has like soul in it. It has this energy that you, Liz, were talking about. This is incredible, right? How like one minute think can like sell a project or inspire people or like change things or like shift or pivot for some people. That that's I find this is like a magic of uh, quick sketching and sketching on locations and connecting with people. I can imagine when you used to travel how many amazing connections and maybe even friends you you you, you created during this so urban sketching tours during your own uh, like um, uh, Palladian Odyssey tours, right? All these uh, European this is so beautiful. <laughs> this is a life hack, like go sketch on location if you want to get like new connection, new friends. <laughs> yes, totally. Uh, and I believe this if you like, uh, you say that you document your life uh, in these sketchbooks. I can imagine how, like, how many sketchbooks you have up until now. And the question is, how do you like index them? Because uh, I remember our first interview, you had such a beautiful background, uh, like filled with the rows of your sketchbooks. <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering that during these two years that we, we hadn't uh, talked live, I imagine that this wall of sketchbooks is like spread <laughs> probably. Well, how, how do you index them? Because for me, at least, it's such a challenge because I, for now I just store them in big white boxes and I can't visually see them. And if I need to find something, I need to like go through all these boxes to find one particular sketch. Like, what's your life hack on that? Right. Well, um, for starters, I pick up a book that's got some, yeah, I, I, um, I, stack my books so uh -huh. that um they're this like the paper is the visible one so I actually stack them like into the shelf which so it's yeah. the most um efficient use and then I put a number and a date start uh -huh. of it now because I've basically scanned nearly every sketch I've ever done not quite there's a period of a, about 18 months maybe when I wasn't because I've been blogging the whole journey Mm -hmm. then I can easily find I just go to my blog and search or I just search Google Liz Steele yellow teacup for example right um, and it will come through on my blog and it'll come through with a heap of different um, yeah different sketches and um, I can tell from the date I used to put the date on the file name yeah uh, and then it's like okay so I've got the date now let's find the sketchbook and what I've actually started to do is this is still working projects is this is my index book and so my index book actually has red, red on the one. edge yeah <laughs> so it's easy to find um and the idea of this and so i, I haven't finished it is to write oh it's got the it's got the sketchbook number the date it started and also what sketchbook it is because sometimes i can't necessarily stack them in order because it might be a small sketchbook Mm -hmm. um, and then my idea is to go on the on this side of the page and write one or two signature pages that's in, contained in the sketch. Because as I go back over the years, a lot of my early sketchbooks, there might be one or two spreads that um, were really successful that I use as examples in my teaching. Uh, but now 
since well i i created a a, a new course la, um, end of last year i actually went on on basically on sketchbook design i went through all of my sketchbooks and i had to try and find them and it was such a it's quite a process to do it so now when i scan i put the sketchbook number in the file name and it's oh. so much easier <laughs> to find so i've just got to find the number i don't have to worry about the date so this is fantastic. So, um, yeah, so basically it's easy to find because of my obsessive blogging over the years that I continue to do. Um, not social media, uh, social media is secondary to me. It's all about the blog where I'm sharing all my work and the kind of progress and, um, you know, the narrative of my life. Once again, that idea of storytelling. So, yeah, it is it is a problem. And, like, yeah, I don't know. I'm nearly... I'm nearly, I'm just looking at the shelf. I'm nearly full of it. The <laughs> shelf is nearly completely full. I don't know what I'm going to do now. <laughs> <I was> just... <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, I mean, I have about, so I'm on one, I'm at 149 of my everyday sketchbooks. Mm -hmm. And then I have about 111 um, travel sketchbooks which are a different numbering system yeah. and then I've got a, a heap of rent like maybe about 20 random or something so I've got like 270 sketchbooks or something like that something like that and they grow at about 20 a year approximately aha uh -huh. wow because that was my Somewhere. next question like how quickly and how much <laughs> it grows like in a year and by the way i really love the like graphic look of these walls of sketchbooks because they create this beautiful like white blackish background and it is so beautiful it is and it doesn't matter what the sketchbook is mm -hmm. um you know what the cover is like in the early days the, bo the books i was using weren't very robust so i actually grabbed them in different colored paper mm -hmm. but when you stack them that way they all look uniform even though yeah. there's a lot of different types of sketchbooks there there's just as you say it's the black and white and it just yeah it's <laughs> I remember it's that very cool. I really love to uh, to store my like uh, books on the bookshelf this way because I love this pure whitish look. Uh, when I was an active student, I really loved like all white. I used to do like this paper modeling, all in white, but different textures of white for like the bridge bridge modeling or house modeling. And then I realized it's really hard to find the book <laughs> because you need to change <laughs> the <laughs> thickness. Yeah. Or the thickness, or like the texture look. So I, I is very trained to like different shades of whitish paper. <laughs> oh, this is so cool! Yeah. But by the way, yeah, talking about your courses. So you, uh, thanks to this fact that you like. Uh, sketch the narrative of your life and this is such a privilege to go on google and just put in like list steel yellow teacup or red teacup and google gives you like a whole like lots of search results for that this is incredible so probably this is one of the reasons so why you decided to create this uh, new course on sketchbook design and i know that recently you finished another online course on uh, like buildings as well. Could you please tell us more about it? And especially for those of uh, uh, people who will be watching and wondering from where to start, like uh, which course is like the very, very complete beginner level. So we can have this kind of index and system in mind where to start. <laughs> Um, right. Okay. So yeah. So my, my latest course is actually a sketchbook design one. So I've been create I've been um, creating like in depth uh, like three month long um, online courses since two thousand and fourteen. So now I have six of them, and I periodically go through and do what I call a group run through, which is to go through um, the course with group with with people, and then to supplement all of the pre recorded stuff with then weekly live streams to review work and to, uh -huh. to give new uh, answer questions and all the rest so that's what the buildings course was actually filmed um actually filmed in 2016 and even some lessons in italy oh, wow. um i actually i got a friend from italy. edinburgh to come down and help uh -huh. me film um and uh -huh. palladio there's a um, couple of palladian buildings as well so we're talking yeah. about palladian odyssey um so, so yeah, so I have um, a number of things and the buildings one's coming up in a few weeks time at the time of which we're talking about this. So, but I basically have built my courses so that they really build on each other. And the very first one that I did um, is uh, foundations, mm -hmm. which is really uh, 
for after a couple of years of teaching, I realized there's a lot of people out there who are sketching all the time, but when something goes wrong, they have no idea why. And it's because they haven't been really solidly grounded in the fundamentals of how to see and how to measure and how to um, flatten when they're out on location, a complex scene into like two dimension and, and know where the important edges are. So I created that course foundations. And then a couple of years later, I did um, a watercolor course. So they're my two beginner courses and I've actually bundled them together with the sketchbook design course mm -hmm. in a bundle called sketch your life which is really for people to really build as kind of foundational skills and like the idea behind the sketchbook design is like I have this theory that even if you're not if you're unsuccessful with your sketch if you can just spend a little bit of time designing the page putting a border around thinking about where you're going to put some text on the page um, that you can actually create a pleasing um, spread and be happy about it, even though you weren't happy about the sketch. Uh -huh. And it's one of the things, I just ignore my doorbell at the moment. <laughs> um, it's one of the things that I think is really important um, to, um, yeah, to kind of have, that, have some strategies to be happy with your work and to accept your, um, yeah, your progress and your narrative. Um, and then I have a second tier of, of courses which then build on those foundations and um, and and go forward from then. So um, we have um, Edges, which is all about getting the most out of ink and wash sketches, creating uh -huh. better um, depth and focus and how to decide what to do in ink, what to do in watercolour. We have the Buildings course, which is very, very specific um, strategies that I've developed over the years from my architectural background and my love of sketching buildings quickly uh -huh. we have some perspective in it but it's kind of a very loose approach to buildings and a way of seeing buildings in a different way so it makes them easier to sketch and then I have a, a sixth course which is called watercolor and location which is all taking all of the concepts from all the previous courses and doing more advanced composition uh, more use of watercolor and um yeah so that's a really fantastic course as well so th that's my six courses <laughs> at the moment um and how they all build on each other and how they punk they're kind of um they're bundled so that's the second three is bundled together as an yeah. urban sketching course so that's the emphasis really on using these skills out on location mm -hmm. um so yeah there's a so probably for complete beginners, it will be reasonable just to enroll in a bundle where there are like foundations, watercolor uh, and sketchbook. And, and the sketchbook design. And then yeah. they're the ones that I go through, like, you know, so once a year I'll go through those courses, which is uh -huh. the best time to, go, to to actually sign up. And and it's like a long-term commitment. I think people think, oh, I'm going to start sketching and I'm going to be a master really like, you know like that no the, like actually developing sketching takes time and I think the oh. more you accept that and go right okay I'm going to devote a year to really working on my sketching really building a solid foundation um and and working systematically because I think that's the thing now there's so much content on the internet but it's all over the place and you jump from one thing to another it's you copy system. someone else's yeah. work mm -hmm. Um, but I, I try to teach concepts and try to really encourage people to develop their own style. Not so much. I don't want people to copy me because I'm like, I break all the rules. <laughs> I teach you what you should do. And then I do something completely different. This is our rebel, <laughs> rebellious. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, so it's kind of like, yeah, you know, it's like, let's, let's just buy a program that's going to, that's actually going to uh, like be with us for a long time. And a lot of my a lot of students come back and redo the courses. They're designed to redo them. So they come back whenever there's a group run through, they come back and there's a whole group of them that know each other from previous courses. Yeah. And, and um, yeah, so it's a whole community as well. I just, you can tell, I love it. It's, yeah. it's, um, yeah, it's I, really I been the greatest honour. Yeah, it's your passion. And I really love that there are like levels for people, like for beginners, then they uh, progress with like more advanced, like level one, level two, level three, and they grow and the sky is the limit. It. the funny thing is literally uh like two weeks ago i got an email from from a guy and he's writing like olga i've been reading your emails and i've been watching like your youtube videos and i watched he told like i watched all the youtube videos on perspective topic and i still do not understand uh, how to like draw these like and this in perspective and i'm like this is the system this is the
this looks like a disease of our age, especially for youngsters, for people under like 30 and 20 uh, who want like everything quickly, 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 quickly. I want a new skill uh, in 10 minutes or in an hour maximum. I watch, they watch uh, plus they watch all the videos like heaps like uh, they spent hours of their time on like videos on youtube from different topics and they don't have this structure in their head and at the same time they don't understand that it's better to invest in a particular course in a particular teacher who will come and like give this system and one by one teach them the basics that they will not struggle and spend like years of their life watching free content on youtube when they could spend like a couple of hundreds of uh, dollars and have this system in place and start building their skill because it, indeed it takes time to develop a skill, like at least at a proper level. So this is like a, a very important note. And you have to do the exercises too. This yes. is the thing. People think that, oh, just by watching things, I'll get it. It's like, no, you actually have to do the exercises. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, that's one of the things in my courses too, is that exercises are very, very specific mm -hmm. to what I'm teaching that concept and they and then progressively initially because we want to keep building on it so we just want you to focus on this skill then this skill and, and do the work but you know it doesn't and you've got to keep going back to I think also you've got to keep going back to basics so I always find that I mean even like last um you know last week when I've been sketching trees and it's not something that I'm like like I sketch a lot of I went back to basics again and I went back and I'm back to the found the you know my three core principles because that's the way I then develop my work is to go back go back through foundational ideas think about them in new ways different ways combine yeah. them in different ways and then move forward as well so yeah totally agree yeah yeah it's uh, important to like put in your time and practice like uh, daily sketching is the best thing ever yeah by the way Liz I guess you you do sketch daily right or like at least like every other day, probably. Uh, I, I, I sketch six days a week. So Sunday's my day of rest. So as a Christian, mm -hmm. I don't actually, I have a day off. But yeah. apart from that, yes. Yeah, so I, and I document like um, every, like nearly every day. Okay, this have been a couple of periods in my life when I haven't. Mm -hmm. But um, even then, if I could just like sketch my morning coffee, the way I, it's like breathing in a way for me. It's ah, just yeah, a quick beautiful. sketch, but yeah, so most you know most weeks six six days. Yeah, but probably during um, your traveling time and during your uh, urban sketching tours, you sketch so much more on locations. By the way, let's go. Let's go to. Let's talk Palladio. <laughs> probably one of our favorite topics. <laughs> uh, yeah, because you you used to have this Palladian. Journey, Palladian Odyssey. I really do hope that very soon, maybe in a year, you will recreate it when the borders in New Zealand and Australia will be open. And for those uh, of uh, our creatives who are watching this, uh, probably the first question is like, why Palladio? If it is maybe a, because Palladio, uh, and in particular, probably. Palladian villas, right? Because Palladio is known not only for villas, but also like church, right? And, uh, uh, and palaces, but he was most famous for, for villas. And yeah, I'm wondering like why Palladio, why you decided on that particular like rena Renaissance architect? Um, okay, so this, so I've actually been obsessive about Palladio for years since university. Uh, uh, and, uh, so he's like a modern architect in the, you know, the 1920s. He, he designed these very innovative white boxes villas. And I found this uh, essay by Colin Rowe that mm -hmm. it's called the I Ideal, the, the, the Mathematics of an Ideal Villa. And he compares... Oh. Luca Bizier's villas with Palladio. So that was like the first time I kind of really, and I got really excited and got really excited about this idea that 
um, that you know that particularly that modern the modern modern architecture the big names are so steeped and like Le Corbusier in particular so steeped in the work of of um, earlier history because yeah I think at a university we're just like just modern just contemporary don't worry about history of architecture so much so I was really fascinated about learning from history and learning from principles mm -hmm. so I've been obsessed with Palladio for years like seriously years I okay. um if you go to listdill.com slash Palladio you'll see how I've been there are so Palladio. many mock articles on that topic. and I just happen yeah. to have this is from 2001 that's fantastic so 20 yeah. years ago I started going through um books and sketching um and this is before I sketched on location I used to sketch from photos or sketch yeah, after my yeah. trips so um for me um the idea like Palladio so he's like you know his villas in the 1550s kind of era um are so innovative because he he's one of the I suppose he's the first person to apply the kind of classical temple front to domestic buildings but not only domestic buildings but they're rural farms so they're not grand palaces mm -hmm. they're actually very functional working farms so it's this beautiful um you know combination of very precise classical details um with great functionality which mm -hmm. is like you know that um very important uh, and then also this amazing pr uh, proportion um, so he's got all of this mathematical proportion of different sizes of rooms and the way they connect with each other um, and hierarchy of the whole and the part. So there's actually so much about him. And also he was a great drawer. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons why he's, uh, the, the main reason why he's so famous, he's the most influential architect in the in Western architecture, in, in English architecture and America particularly, very very influenced by his work lots of copies and that's because he wrote a book and he oh, like, so the four, the four books right, right? yeah <laughs> I actually have a second copy that lives in Italy um where he kind of you know he drew and wrote about his villas like this page yeah. is very special to me because I read it on location when I was at the villa um and it's kind of like it's in the same way as we like I blog you know you you actually you, you know you do a well, even as an architect, you you design something, you do a drawing, and then you write about it to the client. So it's that kind of process. And then because of this book, very influential. And, um, yeah, it's just like a dream come true to be able to teach sketching and travel sketching in the Veneto region of um, of Italy, which is just inland from from Venice, yeah. with um, Mike Botton, who's a local sketcher here, oh. who used to run a furniture business, so he knows that area from yeah. Milan furniture yeah. fairs and all the rest. And I think Palladio is so good to learn architecture sketching because he has these big, simple volumes, mm -hmm. um, which are great for learning the basics. Because I that's what I say, you know, you've got to see the volume first. You've got to see the volume, how it sits in space, the perspective, and then also beautiful proportions the way things relate to each other and classical really very crisp classical details and so he's just like the most ideal um architect like the villas are just and also beautiful setting and you know you've got all the food and the all the wine and all the rest to do with Italy but in this beautiful setting with really fascinating history so we have a local historian who um who comes on the tour with us and it's like so interesting because it's like the it's the Venetian families going inland mm -hmm. um, after they lost some of their trade with the opening up of the new world. So it's like this, like everyone who's been to Venice come on the tour and go, wow, this has got so much connection. to It's like the other half of the Venice story that no one knows about. And so it's this beautiful yeah. kind of combination of, you know, great for architecture, great location, fascinating history yeah. all all together in one um and really able to kind of build over it you know a spirit a period of the six days really build skills in a way that is a lot harder to do in just like a normal two-day workshop um as we go from one one villa to another so i could keep talking <laughs> What are you going to be going on on Palladio i mean <laughs> oh, in my necklace is Palladio oh my Palladio. goodness <laughs> I love it. But that's from the, the Palladian window, right? This Palladian window. Yeah, Palladian. From, the Basilica, from the Basilica in Vicenza. Um, so in Vicenza is just a beautiful city with that. It's got his, um, the yeah. Basilica and some of the other palaces. But um, yeah, and I just, he's just such a, just so, it's just so rich the more, like I read the, yeah, I read the four books. 
<laughs> from time to time, I'll just pull it out and read it. Um, and you know, I've met some, you know, I've met some of the villa owners. I've kind of like, you know, uh-huh. met. Um, yes, it's just just been a, a wonderful kind of combination of what my interest as an architect and as a sketch are all kind of combined together. Um, yeah, just I can't wait to get back. <laughs> Yes, please just listen to you create this buzzle in me, like to go to Italy immediately to visit like Vicenza, Veneto, Venice, and to like immerse uh, myself into this like beauty of architecture, of culture, and of food <laughs> as well. I remember uh, it, it was also, at least for us, at the Russian Art Academies for Books of Architecture by Andrea Palladi, it was like a must read. Uh, I, wow. I, I really hope that uh, like for those of our viewers who have like architecture background or maybe are currently uh, like architecture students and they haven't read these books yet, we, uh, we highly encourage you to do that because you will get so much inspiration from just looking at this beautiful beautiful layouts with this golden section and um, uh, with like this beautiful perfect proportions and I believe probably one of the reasons why Andrea Palladio became like the most famous architect in the western world is because he was such a theoretic he was not only practicing but he has such a theory on architecture and like this probably gives so much power uh, to to him and to his um, art uh, that we are able to learn and learn and learn again from him. Even like right, even now, I feel inspired to go back to these books and go through them because it, yes. it's like endless. It's endless stream of knowledge, inspiration, beautiful proportions. And uh, especially these days, this time when we are locked, right? Oh, we can go and visit, uh, like, for example, Italy now, but we can go to our bookshelf and grab a book like uh, by Andrea Vladia. And we can, in our imagination, we can, can go to, to Italy and to, to have these beautiful moments in life of like inspiration and creative buzz after that. Yeah, Liz, I really do hope that very soon everything we'll be back to a place again and we will meet in in europe and in australia <laughs> or in new zealand this is this is fantastic <laughs> yes yeah i know it's it's that it's the you know as you say it's the fact that he documented his his thoughts and his work um and he was so prolific as well but also i was reading um on location like he was describing how to build something yeah um and then i realized that actually helped me sketch it yeah yeah so he's like talking about the proportions of a column and then i go ah oh, that's helping me sketch as well so yeah. Yeah. there's just so many different layers in which we can um pick up ideas from the past that i think we just want then often we just want the latest but it's that um yeah i just i just love building on history and finding new ways to combine it with what i do now yeah, probably because like when you better understand the plot, right, the history, you can better express it in your drawing. That's why for people who just start with architecture sketching and they ask me like where to start, I say like start with a layout because when you see a layout, you understand how the building functions, like what's what's like its design features, like if it's symmetrical or not, and it really do help uh, to 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 create a sketch on that topic, not just copying blankly. I remember thanks to you, Liz, I created my um, first live event in Australia. It was in Adelaide two years ago. Thank you so much for sharing this event with your community because I, I met wonderful people. There were probably 10 or 12 of us and we were sketching this beautiful uh, glass uh, glass palace, uh, glass building in, in Botanical Garden of Adelaide. And I did start it with the layout of it. And then we progressed to like one point perspective, two point perspective. This is so interesting. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the kind of understanding of the understanding of the building, like 
as you say, the plan, the layout, like when I, I'm not just sketching what I see, yeah. I'm sketching what I understand the building uh, to be and then translating it back. And so if you just learn, oh, just you, all you have to do is sketch what you see. Oh, it's, it's more than that. The more you can understand, uh, the more it helps you see to be able yeah. to sketch it. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, I feel like I can talk endlessly, <laughs> but I, I, I look at my list of questions that I've prepared and I re do realize that we, we need another live stream together. <laughs> anytime, anytime, yeah. you know I'm up for it. <laughs> yeah, so probably like the last question for today will be because I, I just realized that we've been talking almost an hour already. I'm like, oh, how can I? We're already in the first couple of We questions. just started, yeah. But talk, even talking about Palladio could take like hours of time. So my dear creatives who, who will be watching us, don't judge us. Uh, we hope that we will have an opportunity for a second live stream. So Liz, to, to close up today's um, beautiful live stream, what would you... Uh, what advice would you give to complete beginners in like urban sketching and watercolor, people who have this passion and especially people who used to have this passion as they were like um, teenagers and they have this creative buzz in them, but uh, they feel like they have another education maybe in finance or economy and they do feel that they want to go back, but they have this incredible fear of studying. What would you say to these people? A lot of things that I could say, but I think um, my kind of number one thing and it's going to be two is like keep it simple and and enjoy the process so I see a lot of beginners when I teach if I give them a free a free exercise say go and find whatever you want to sketch they find the most complicated scene a scene that I would be hesitant to do <laughs> and they get game way too deep and 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 like the panic and get very discouraged so I think keeping it simple and really building those basic skills so instead of like drawing, like a, we're talking about architecture a lot, instead of drawing a whole building in perspective, learn how to draw a window really mm. well. And a well, or, window or, in particular. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, exactly. And I mean, actually, windows are one of the hardest parts of drawing buildings anyway. But um, so, so like really... Um, yeah, build those those basic skills um, to really understand what you're doing in terms of how you're seeing the world in terms of edges, shapes, and volumes, and then to learn some measuring and just to take your time. Even I know we've been talking about quick sketching, right? It's just really important, but the the quickness and the looseness comes with time. It's more important just to uh, just do something small. Uh, mm -hmm. Not don't try to. I have this, uh, you know famous quote share we share but we don't compare uh -huh. don't just take it slowly and and do things that you're comfortable with something that comes from the heart but keep it simple don't be too ambitious just so that you get you become obsessive you get the bug because <laughs> um, if you start if you think oh see all this work on Instagram and you go I want to do that that looks fine that looks easy or whatever I'll just do it you get discouraged then you stop the process of that regular sketching and the idea is to just build your skills keep doing it and kind of having fun just if you're not enjoying it just pair it back keep it more simple um, and don't get distracted by materials there you go I was just giving you about 10 tips <laughs> yeah a blog post, a blog article, 10, 10, 10 things. <laughs> 10 things. But yeah, we really just, yeah, keep it simple. Keep it simple um, and build on the foundation. So just, um, and take your time. It's like, it's, you know, uh, I think that's one of the things I love about the sketchbook is like, not only am I like doing, creating sketches, but I'm creating a narrative of my life. Mm -hmm. So in some sense, the actual document of my life is more important than the quality of the sketches. The fact that in that shelf, I have my life mm -hmm. from the last 10, 12, you know, you know, 12 years or something, uh, 13, 14, I don't know, since when I started. Um, and I can go back and, yeah, the sketches might sometimes make me cringe, but the memories are important. And uh, that just, yeah, be kind to yourself. <laughs> yeah, and stories of one's lives is like 
the most interesting story in the world, right? Why autobiographies or biographies of like people are so interesting to read? Because like this is the story of your life, and Liz, you have such a unique approach because your life it is recorded not only in uh, like little stories that you do incorporate into your sketchbooks, right? Some uh, some writings over there, but also of course sketches. And uh, th th this is absolutely incredible. Your story of your life to to go back to share it with you with the world, right? Not only with your like close family, uh, like impressions from the trip, right? Uh, instead of showing them like a bunch of hundreds and hundreds of photos on like uh, <laughs> on computer it's so much more interesting to share blog post or show them a couple of sketches and they pick up these um, emotions and impressions from that trip and they start to want to go there with you <laughs> next time yeah yes but also I find the most interesting things when I look back at my sketchbooks are mm -hmm. not the big events the big travel things and I think this is a really good message in the time of the days that we live you know it's actually the small little um, objects that I was using as part of everyday life because they come and go, you know, um, you know, I'm not going to talk about Tika, but like a favourite mug, it's now broken, but you used to use it all the time. Wow. And when, if you've sketched it, it brings you back, you know, they're just little, you know, the, uh, you know, my keys, my yeah. keys, you move home, you've got, you get a new car, you've got different keys. So many little things in life, the little things that you, you almost take for granted, if you actually sketch them, they have this amazing um, richness in the memories that they bring, the little things that we forget yeah. if you sketch them, just add this other layer. So yes, the travel is great, but we don't, we don't need to travel to create beautiful memories of our life. Yeah, I really love the idea that you shared at the very beginning that sometimes you do start your day with like a very loose, quick sketch of like a teacup or coffee cup and I think that for a lot of people it's like a life hack how to incorporate sketching into their life because very often they're like where I find time where I find time for sketching and I'm like where do you find it like under your bed covers you create this time like you you set up like you're drinking your coffee why don't you have like your uh sketchbooks it can it can be like that small like from like Moleskine you know, or any, any brand like A6, A5 format, it can go into your pocket and it's always with you. Even if you're on lockdown as we are and you're wearing your pajamas all day, it can be in your pajamas pocket, right? And, and you can sketch your pajamas too. And you can sketch that your will, pajamas. That will, that will, those pajamas will yeah. make you remember lockdown. <laughs> Yeah, and later on you can go back and you can say, wow, this was such a, an unusual and amazing time that I, I could learn so much from. And uh, Liz, I really love your idea of this, like sketching small daily things that sometimes we take for granted, right? And uh, I believe that these small things, they do have like... Um, power in them and uh, they create these little memories uh, which are so which are becoming so precious as time flies as time goes and uh, uh, even like to sketch like a couple of fountain pens like right or like pants and this is so incredible to go back in time like in years and uh, like immerse yourself into that particular period of your time and you realize at the moment how much you've learned from it. So this is really beautiful. You don't need to sketch only if you like have a tour in, in France or in Italy. You can sketch even now. So you guys sketch your pajamas today, sketch your morning cup of coffee and literally maybe your MacBook or, or notepad or like any book that you have, by the way, uh, Liz, when I buy new books on urban sketching, each time I can see your drawings in them. This is so interesting. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Liz, thank you so much for joining this interview. I got so much inspiration. I really do hope that all our viewers will get as inspired as I did. And yeah, I had also so much fun and joy yeah to connect with you to to learn from you so thank you so much for joining <laughs>
Thank you, Olga. It's just been so wonderful. Um, you know, I just I love catching up with you, and it's been a long time. I love talking about sketching and yeah. teaching and Palladio. Palladio, yeah. <laughs> exactly. To have someone who 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 wants to ask me about Palladio makes my heart sing. So yeah, I it's so near and dear to to like any probably architect's heart, right? And sketching. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. So thank you one more time, Liz, for sharing this early morning in Sydney with me with us. I know it's very early in in Australia, and I wish you a beautiful creative day ahead. And I really do hope to catch up with you either live or in real life it would be real life. fantastic <laughs> yeah on, on location <laughs> yeah so thank you so much thank you liz yes bye i'll be i'll be ending this beautiful live stream Oop.